This video is about the XT127 Spectrum Analyzer. It's a low-cost unit that you can find on the uh, web at places like Banggood, and it costs about $270. Is it worth it? Well, that depends on your usage. If you want a portable unit that you can carry around for drive tests or go up a tower or something like that, this might be a lot more convenient for you than a large, heavy, full-featured spectrum analyzer. What you get in the box is this white box. It has six soft keys across the bottom and a scroll wheel on top and the antenna connection on top. It doesn't give you any uh, warning about the input levels, but with any spectrum analyzer, I would recommend no more than minus 30 dBm and a no DC at all. Uh, you also get a rubber ducky style antenna which is very much set up for uh, things like uh, cell phone frequencies and routers and high frequency stuff in the gigahertz range. You might want to make yourself something out of an SMA and a short length of wire if you want to do any FM broadcast work or something like that. Uh, it is 10 megahertz to 2.7 gigahertz and so it has enough frequency width you can do a lot of useful things with it. To turn it on you activate the right hand soft key which is also labeled power and there you have the frequency range it comes up with a menu real-time spectrum analyzer uh, spectrogram thermal spectrum setup and uh, we'll look at the setup first not a lot useful there it uh, times out uh, if you don't turn it off you, know, you can set it to whatever you want it's got a time setting it's got a brightness setting and a language that's not what you want to see in setup, but that's what you get. Now, I'm going to go back to the main menu because I'm not going to save anything. And I'm going to go into real-time spectrum mode because that's what you're probably most interested in. Now, I've preset this for uh, 20 megahertz uh, out of my old analog uh, frequency generator. It's, an, it's not a very good frequency generator, but it does the job for what I use it for. And since it's got an analog dial, I'm a little off on my center frequency, which is at about 21.5 megahertz, maybe, on this. Now, basic functions that you want to do with a spectrum analyzer, it's measuring frequency versus amplitude. And that's different from an oscilloscope that does time versus amplitude. So on a spectrum analyzer, you want to be able to control the frequencies that you see. And the soft keys allow you to do a center frequency and a span, or alternately a start and a stop. And that's pretty much in line with what most spectrum analyzers do. These are soft functions. Uh, and so they're not as precise as having a keyboard to enter something. For instance, if I want to do a center frequency, I hit the center frequency button, and nothing's happening. <laughs> okay. There we go. Now, uh, you can see two of the soft keys are blued. One of them, above F2, shows the current center frequency, which is 20.04. And again, this is one of the weaknesses of this unit. You can't precisely set that. Uh, the only options that I have uh, for setting it are this scroll wheel on top. And with that, I can set it by 1 megahertz increments. I can set by 100 because there's a times 100 here. I also have a times 0.1, and that's it. That's all I can do. So let me set the center frequency here to 21 since that's closer to my peak now I turn the scroll wheel to change it to 21 I push the scroll wheel to actually perform the action and there you see that my peak is shifted towards the center frequency which is 21.04 okay very good now if I want marker functions marker functions are found at F5 and it has standard things like maximum to center frequency. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I was pushing marker to center frequency. My bad. 
as you can see I've got the marker and obviously my uh, frequency generator is drifting just a little bit because it, the marker is not perfectly on the peak but that's how you do it it's got a soft key for max center frequency not marker <laughs> which is what I was pushing all right now some of you might be curious about the resolution bandwidth function so the right hand soft key has a down function so I'm going to go down and it has preset this to auto now I can change it and I can import which means I can turn this scroll wheel or I can go back to auto now you can see I've gone to three and that makes it very very slow because it's uh, scanning the thing with the resolution band with the three kilohertz you can also see I've lost the peak and this is fairly common with spectrum analyzers you probably have done it yourself if you've used them this thing has because I set the, the resolution bandwidth so small it set me down to a center frequency of about 12 megahertz so I have lost my peak so the only way to get back that I have found is to just go back to the resolution bandwidth and import it again and I can go back up to 100 kilohertz hit that now I have to go back up and my span is now set to 2 megahertz and my center frequency to 12 and a half so I've got to do both of those if I want to get my peak back so center frequency I'm going back up the 21 about and hit the soft button there's my peak and my span is very narrow so I don't have a lot of points of resolution on this so I can go back to my span make it back to 20 megahertz and there's my peak back and it's pretty close to the marker again now some people that have uh, used spectrum analyzers before know that you can actually see the DC and even negative frequencies on some spectrum analyzers. This one won't do this. This one will uh, default back to a span of whatever it takes that you go no less than 10 megahertz. I don't find that to be a disadvantage. As a matter of fact, I think it's a little confusing for the some of the older spectrum analyzers to be able to display DC and even negative frequencies if you set the span too wide. You can also set the start and stop frequencies with the soft buttons. And the only other thing that I haven't shown you is the reference level which is currently set to minus 20 dBm. And as you can see I have the option to change it with the scroll wheel. I can set it to minus 30 Minus 10, minus, I'm going to leave it to minus 20. Uh, 